Okay, um, good morning, welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this session uh, for the course BC205, which is about the keys to supernatural ministry. Uh, we will begin with a word of prayer as we uh, generally do. And uh, okay, let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to um, learn your word. Father, we pray you will minister to our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord, let the Holy Spirit bring revelation um, of the, the word of God and the power of God in our lives. And God, we pray, Lord, that you will strengthen us in all that you want us to be and all that you want us to do. Um, especially, Lord, in the area of your uh, uh, supernatural work, Father God. And we thank you that, Lord, you're, um, Lord, you're a prayer-answering God and that you will minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so um, welcome uh, each one of you. In the last class, we took some time to discuss about the supernatural and we were asking what is the supernatural and then we said uh, uh, are there any hindrances for us to walk in the supernatural um, and uh, even today uh, we'll just have a short discussion um, and the question that I, I want to ask us is are there any objections to the supernatural? I know we talked about it last time but let's begin here and then I will move ahead. Hopefully, we'll also touch on um, the first section today. The first section as in your notes, uh, the possibility of a supernatural life and ministry. We'll, we'll touch upon that. But let's begin by answering the question, are there common objections to supernatural ministry? What are those objections? And you know, we'll see how we can address or explain when people object in these ways. Yeah, so. Yeah, people's opinions. Why do uh, people say certain things about the supernatural and then, yeah, why they don't believe? Mm. Okay, okay. So uh, some only believe that it is for the early church and uh, no longer, you know, functions. So okay, that's one objection that people could have. Any other objections? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can bring, but go ahead. You can keep sharing. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, people find it hard to accept when certain churches focus on the supernatural and they teach about the supernatural, they um, want people to expect the supernatural to happen. Uh, yeah, there is a hesitation. Right, so yeah, that can also be um, a limitation. Yeah, please. I think the teacher, I think the teacher, like, uh, read about the brother line, where it's supernatural, where you have to actually do something like, for example, if you're sick, like, you know, if a person is very dangerous, like, you know, 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 it's a different thing when you're already they're taking the medication and then praying to get well, that's fine because you already put in the work. But when you're not doing the thing that's already there for you, are not taking the medication that doctors prescribe for you, and you're saying that, no, I'll do it like, like this only. I think that's where people like uh, get confused rather as to should you go supernatural or just depend on the practical matter. Okay. So when people have this uh, mindset about one or the other, yeah. hmm. so uh, only the 
practical aspects or only the supernatural yeah. then there can be um uh, you know some uh, confusion and it can even cause a lot of problems yeah. when uh, if you know people try to focus on either of the two uh, fine i get that sean i get that then pr- people have a problem and they say don't go and listen to all these uh, you know supernatural healing and things otherwise you will yeah. Early on, uh, some just may like only focus on supernatural, or they these people might attend one service and they might uh, or only supernatural things happening. So from that as I say, I think they only preach supernatural, they don't preach any other things. So they think it's supernatural oriented church, something like that. But they don't give, they don't give like a proper chance to church. Like they let them, like let them hear what they're actually saying. They can't just like uh, assume this is what the church is after one. So you have to go there two, three times. So some people may think that if they, these people only focus on supernatural, they don't focus on other things. That's the main thing. That's essentially the balance of these two. When it comes to supernatural, it comes to ministry. I think that's where people need, need to learn, like where to draw the line and how people uh, uh, view that. Mm. Okay. So the balance of uh, practical and supernatural, that could be an objection. Sure. Uh, anything else? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. fine. So people have uh, certain expectations um, about what the supernatural should look like. But uh, in what you shared, it it's more like, you know, if people are expecting something instantaneous to happen, that is supernatural. There's no objection to the supernatural. They are expecting the supernatural to take place. Um, but yeah. I think I understand where you're coming from. Okay, sure. Okay, so uh, these are all like the common ob- objectives, uh, objections to the supernatural ministry. And you see, um, as we've been stating in our last um, uh, discussion, uh, though people may have all these comments, we have to look at what the Bible says, because that is our standard. Okay. Um, now, a, a lot of what is being told, does it have basis in scripture? That's a question that any student of the Bible has to ask. If there is a basis in the Bible and you know it's interpreted in the right way, we have every reason to receive it. So uh, last time I uh, discussed from that book, Ministering, Healing and Deliverance, um, a few biblical reasons Okay, uh, why the supernatural exists and why um, you know miracles, uh, healings, deliverances are important uh, as far as uh, even ministry is concerned. So when we pray for people, we teach the word. Okay? But in Acts chapter one, uh, Luke writes, you know, uh, uh, an account of Jesus, all that he taught and did. So as much as we talk about teaching there is also the doing we can't separate the two uh, so in the ministry of jesus uh, it was not just him teaching there are a lot of good um, sermons 
or uh, insights, revelations that we can take from what Jesus spoke. But in all the Gospels, you also read about all that he did. He healed people. He worked miracles. He cast out demons. Uh, that's very much a part of his ministry. So if that is not important, I don't think in that limited three years, three and a half years that Jesus had, um, he would not have focused on miracles at all. He would have just focused on teaching. Let me download all the teaching. Three and a half years, I have limited time. Give them all the teaching and you know that, that will help them know God better. But he taught as well as did. So there is an importance which he himself gave for the work of God, the power of God through his life. And we were saying in the last class that a uh, few biblical reasons you know, why we must minister uh, the supernatural is because uh, the supernatural reveals the reality and the nature of God. And I shared with us how God revealed himself as you know, Jehovah Rapha and uh, how he continued to keep the people well the Israelites through the wilderness um, and, uh, you know, even in Egypt, uh, God protected them. Miracles took place. You look at uh, Moses and the way Moses led God's people. So many signs, wonders, because that's God. God was revealing himself. He was revealing his nature uh, through what he was doing in people's lives. And in the same manner, uh, even in the New Testament, we see God revealing uh, his, himself through the uh, mighty works that take place. Now, miracles reveal God's greatness. When we look at uh, John chapter 2, when Jesus turned water into wine, was that the only way that he could have solved the problem? Maybe they could have solved the problem by wisdom. Wisdom would say, wine is over, uh, send some people to buy some wine. But in John chapter 2, the moment there is a crisis, God chooses to reveal his greatness. What is the greatness? Turning water into wine, which is an impossibility. And as you read John chapter 2, the end of that um, incident, uh, it says this is how Jesus began to um, reveal the glory. right? So that miracle is described as revealing the glory of God. Because the moment something like that happened, People were amazed and they were like, oh, only God can do this. How can water turn into wine? How can something impossible happen? How? And, you know, water turning into wine is also like a restoration because some things take so long to happen. But without anything, you know, God formed something so amazing and beautiful. So it gives us so much hope that this is the God we serve. Even time is not a limitation for him. Things that we feel, ah, oh, it's anyway going to take so long. It, didn't, it took a minute. He could do it. So Jesus revealed his glory. God likes to show off his greatness. Even when it came to you know, uh, the Old Testament, uh, if he wanted to lead the people to the promised land, what is the need to part the Red Sea? Just to show them which way to go. They could have taken the right route and gone. Uh, Joshua leading the people. What is the need to bring down a wall? Just show them the way they'll go. But you find that our God is a miracle working God. He loves to work miracles. For the purpose that we will understand the greatness of God. Okay. So it's his nature. It's just his nature. We can't tell him that, hey, uh, God... Mm, don't you have another way to show your greatness? When he's choosing to show his greatness through the miracles, the wonders that he does. Then uh, miracles demonstrate God's compassion. So many times in the Bible we read that uh, Jesus looked at the multitudes. Uh, they were like uh, sheep without a shepherd. He was moved with compassion and he healed them. So when healings take place in someone's life, it's it's really the compassion of God touching them. Like I remember in my own uh, life, uh, I, I was uh, very sick. I think it was post-college and I had holidays only. But I was sick for many, many days uh, and fever and this. And I just couldn't get up. And 
there was this one uncle who used to come near our home, very elderly person. He'd just visit different families and he used to spend his time visiting families. He had come to my house and my parents told him that she's not well and she's in that room, she's sleeping. I cannot forget. It had been so many days and I was feeling so weak. This elderly uncle, I don't even know him. He came, he prayed a short prayer and he went. But from that moment, I was fine. You know, I just, the strength came back, the fever left. So I was like, this is real. Like, how, how did this happen? This man prayed one prayer and my fever is gone and I recovered. So, you know, even in our own lives, at least for me, all these incidents that have happened in my life, uh, it reveals how real God is. And uh, obviously, you know, who wants to be sick? Nobody wants to be sick, right? So I didn't want to be sick. And it really showed me God's love when he touched, uh, you know, my body. And I was just fine after that. And I was really happy. So I'm sharing a small incident. But imagine when people are healed of any other condition. Nobody wants to be sick uh, and, you know, go through discomfort, pain, difficulty. But that's what Jesus did. Whenever he saw somebody is sick, mute, blind, uh, deaf, uh, God's compassion. So when healings take place, what does it show about God? God is saying, I don't want you to be sick. I don't want you to go through this. So it reveals God's compassion. And that's how even Jesus, uh, you know, really worked through his ministry. So it demonstrates God's love and compassion to us. Miracles have a powerful effect on the people, Okay, especially those who do not believe. Uh, so when people saw Jesus working miracles, many of them turned to God. Many of them started believing in God. Yes, there was a different reaction also. There were people who were questioning, who were skeptical. Uh, we also read that people followed him for the sake of the miracles. There, was, there were both kinds of reactions. But uh, we cannot deny the fact that when miracles happened, um, people were drawn to God. People were drawn to the greatness of God. You know, imagine, think with me, if we lived in Jesus' times and we were walking with Jesus, every day something is happening, right? One day water is turning into wine, one day food is multiplying, one day he's walking on the water, one day he's calling Lazarus out of the grave. You'll be like, wow, this is too much. I can't take it. Every day something is happening with Jesus. And... Uh, it would make us wonder, what is this? Who is this Jesus? What is he about? How is he doing these things? We may want to spend more time with him and, you know, listen to all his sermons. Like if he had his resources, website, we'll go full time, right? All the audio books finish off. Because I want to know, what is this person doing? It really triggers our interest. Okay, so even in scripture, that's how when people experienced miracles, uh, they were drawn to Jesus. Uh, it is said, even the woman uh, out of whom Jesus cast out many demon spirits, she became a disciple of Jesus. So many people that uh, Jesus worked, you know, in their lives, like even the woman that he met at uh, uh, the well. The Samaritan woman, uh, he moves by the gift of prophecy and he tells her, no, you're not telling me the full truth. Uh, you're not married. You're living with someone. She goes and tells the whole village that this man told me everything. Based on what? The supernatural. How did this man know about me? She goes and tells the whole village. And she is interested in this man, Jesus. And she wants the whole village to know that he's come, you know looks like the Messiah. He, he has come. Come and know more about him. So miracles have this um, uh, ability or effect, powerful effect on people to draw them uh, closer to God, especially those who do not believe. Okay. Uh, anyway, we'll go into details and all uh, later, examples later, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you know how this works, uh, isn't it? Like somebody who doesn't believe at all, uh, a prophetic word, spoken to them or you pray for them and they get healed, they'll be like, when is your church service? I want to come. <laughs> you know, I want to attend because I want to know more about this God. So they, they trigger that interest in those who don't believe. Uh, miracles are something that Jesus gave a lot of importance to. So if it is like, you know, one or the other, then either you focus only on the word or you focus only on the supernatural, 
you know one is replacing the other it doesn't work like that both are going together hand in hand okay and we find that jesus gave lot of importance to miracles um and in the last class also i had mentioned i think it was in matthew 11 uh, where uh, jesus tells john john's disciples are questioning once john is in the prison is he really uh, the messiah think about john huh? he he in front of everybody he said behold the lamb of god and he baptized jesus and all now finally jesus did not become a political figure he did not restore the kingdom john must have thought i thought you're going to take charge jesus you're not taking charge are you really the messiah he's wandering in the prison did i make a mistake even john the baptist is getting confused but at that point you know jesus uh, uh, does this when the uh, disciples come and uh, they ask jesus uh, you know john is doubting are you the messiah he does not even say one word what does jesus do in matthew 11 verses 1 to 6 he starts you know he heals he delivers he does all the miraculous works and he tells the disciples go and tell john what you saw that's all he didn't give them any sermon no explanation so what does it tell us it tells us that something that reveals that christ is the messiah are miracles okay that's why jesus never explained himself he just did the miracles and said just go tell john if you can't believe this then i don't know you know so many places you find that jesus did that there are some references um in john 5 verses 31 to 36 uh, where um, jesus himself he states that the miracles that i do are more important than the testimony of john the baptist more than see in those days if john was the uh, the most regarded man of god whatever john said people would believe right so then god could have used only the testimony of john to make people believe but in john chapter 5 verses 31 to 36 Jesus said the miracles that i do you know they testify of me and that you know they are greater than the testimony of john the baptist so when jesus is saying that and we say oh we don't want miracles we don't want the supernatural we are hindering the testimony that god wants to give of himself okay you cannot separate the two just can't separate uh, you know who god is and the supernatural because jesus placed importance if he is placing importance how can we say that hey forget about the miracles just have a deep relationship with god how can we make that statement when jesus is saying it's a part of me you know the supernatural the miracles even greater than the testimony of john are these miracles that you see there were people who questioned jesus um are you really the messiah in giving them uh, the answers this is in john chapter 10 okay i'm not going through the passage but i'm giving you the references so that you can go back and read it and study it so john chapter 10 you can read from verse 24 onwards till about uh, you know um or just read verse 24 25 verse 37 and 38 can somebody read it now i think it will help Verse twenty five. Yeah, twenty four, twenty five, then thirty seven, thirty eight. The Jews gathered around him, saying, "How long you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly." Je- the miracles that I do in my Father's name. speak of me meaning they are giving testimony to who i am uh, 37 38 was okay wow that sounds pretty controversial can you repeat that can you please repeat that 
Yeah, oh, you can't hear. Oh, okay. I won't mute then. I thought I should mute. I don't have to mute. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, now let him read. Yeah. John chapter 10, verse 37. Do not believe in me unless I do what my father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that father is in me and I in the father. Okay, so it's quite uh, you know clear. He's saying, uh, don't believe me if I don't do my father's works. So if Jesus was only teaching and he never did any miracles, what is he saying? Don't believe me. Like, uh, Jesus <laughs> is it like uh, Jesus saying this because don't believe in me unless you I do the Father's works? Because in the Old Testament, uh, God always uh, you know did signs, wonders, and miracles and showed Himself to refer that okay because uh, you know referring that point here could be. Could be because see, God's nature doesn't change, no? Yeah. The way he was in the Old Testament, you see something similar mm. happening through the life of Jesus. And we also know, like the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 1, verse 3, it says that uh, uh, Jesus is the express image of God. And the fact that Jesus came to reveal the Father. Yeah. So, how to reveal the Father without the works? works. So, the works are very much who the Father is. And that is why he's saying, if I don't do the Father's works, just don't believe me. And later he's saying, even if you don't believe me, wow, that's scary. Like, how can Jesus say, don't believe me? But he's giving an option. Like, even if you don't believe me, believe the works. Right? Uh, so then it is telling us something uh, about how God views, we term these miracles and all as the Father's works. Even good deeds, you know, righteous deeds are also part of the Father's works. But uh, the the uh, point that Jesus is making here is that the works of power or the supernatural works, the Father's works, they are speaking about the Father. You believe them because nobody else can do it. Only God can do it. And, uh, you know, God reveals himself through that. So these are all passages that are just like, you know, uh, speaking so clearly to us uh, about the importance that God has placed on miracles. Okay. And uh, one more passage could be in uh, John chapter 14, verses uh, 8 through 11, where the disciples, they question uh, Jesus. Um, they question about the Father to Jesus uh, and the Lord Jesus uh, points to the supernatural works that he's doing and he also reminds them we all know the later on uh, John chapter 14 verse 12 and you shall do greater works than these so talking about the father's works uh, it, you know he explains to them and later he also includes us and he says you will also do greater works than these so in this way Jesus was also pointing to miracles so when we say that the supernatural is not part of what God wants to do, uh, what about, there are four passages, at least, where quite, quite clearly he's saying that you got to believe in these miracles because they are testifying of me. Okay, so this is also uh, another reason why uh, we must give importance to miracles and, you know, we shouldn't just disregard them. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. Um, we can look at three more reasons. The kingdom of God comes with power. So that's how God's kingdom works. Um, okay. We, we will come to that later. But you see instances like, uh, for example, in Matthew chapter 12, you find a person who is uh, oppressed by a demon spirit. The demon goes and that person is free and uh, people start to ask Jesus how how did you do it and then you know he says I did it uh, it happened by the power of the spirit 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and, uh, you know, it really gives, and he says, when the Spirit of God has come among you, the power of God has come among you, the kingdom of God is there. Okay. So when the kingdom of God is demonstrated, you find a connection with the supernatural. So that's what Jesus said. This miracle has happened. This deliverance has happened. The kingdom has come upon you. So the, how does the kingdom come? The kingdom comes with power. So even when Jesus came, he said, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And, you know, um, uh, and, and that whole narration, right? So he says, but in that, uh, he says, uh, the captives will be set free. And uh, um, what... Yeah, heal the broken hearted, the good news will be preached to the poor. So he said all that. And then you see his three and a half years of ministry. Right. So a part of what he was saying is all these miracles. In this way, he ministered to the poor, he ministered to the captives, you know, he ministered to the broken hearted by doing supernatural works. So the kingdom of God came upon the people. How did it come? It came with power. Same way, if you look at the book of Acts, you'll study that in your third year. Uh, you'll find that the believers, the apostles, wherever they went, there were signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances. And, you know, people started believing. Believing communities were birthed in, uh, you know, city after city, village after village. It was a part of their lifestyle, the supernatural. Okay. So these are all things that we can consider. Because it's in the Bible. And, you know, we must not uh, base our faith on anything else. Now, moving on. Two more reasons, uh, you know, why we must give attention to the supernatural is that the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. You know, in Mark chapter 16, we know uh, the Lord Jesus as he um, commissioned the disciples. That's what he said. You know, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Okay. So what are these, these activities? The supernatural. Okay. So we have been commissioned to walk in the supernatural. So if I am a believer um, and uh, I am not in these things, somewhere uh, what Jesus said as a commission, I'm missing out. Okay. He obviously said it to all his disciples, all who are going to follow him. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, no, raise the dead. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. right? Uh, and then speak in new tongues. If they drink anything uh, uh, poisonous, it will not affect them. So these are all the signs, miracles that he talked about. And said, if people believe in me, this will be a part of their life. So the supernatural, uh, the kingdom of God comes with power. And the gospel is also preached with accompanying signs and miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural so when something takes place in our lives uh, the supernatural as i gave you that example right like of when uh, i got healed uh, it really sparked an interest in me i was like um, how can i do this like if i pray for someone will they be healed or uh, every time i had any other uh, health issues I just started praying on myself, over myself, uh, because I want to see more. Uh, it's already in the Bible. That much I know, but it needs to manifest. How can it manifest? So which is what our course is all about. What, what are the keys to the supernatural? Is, is the supernatural in, in the life of Jesus? Yes. Was it there in the ministry of Jesus? Yes. Did he point to it? Did he say it's important? Yes. We don't have any doubts about it. It is there in the Bible. But... The question we are asking is, if he said that these signs will follow those who believe, why is it not following? <laughs> what are the keys to that? We want to understand. What do you think? What do you think? Why, why, why are we not manifesting? <laughs> hmm. Okay, we don't have exposure. Okay, yes. Faith, we are lacking faith for the supernatural, okay? Micah. Right. Uh, 
I before in those times, man, we didn't have like advanced medicines or various things like that. But this day and age, we have many advanced medicines like medicines that can even treat almost can treat or help uh, like your cancer patients get better. Like uh, this is what has come to this age. So when it comes to this age, we of course we will be will be more inclined to go for that. And uh, what I'm saying is, like in those times, people didn't have much an option over there. You know to get healed but now we have many options like this mm -hmm. we, have we have medical, medical insurance yeah, medical is like <laughs> all this so yeah. of course when that happens our uh, you know when it comes to miracles and wonders will be less because our, uh, we, we won't have that much faith the faith that people had before when these were doing miracles and wonders then to compare to now is very different is what i'm trying to say okay see uh you've made a statement okay yeah. All I'm saying is, like, how much can we substantiate it through scripture? So we are saying that uh, because medicine is advanced. Now, I would not say that in those times, medicine was not available. Medicine was still there. No? And if you ask me, I find it amazing that Luke, a physician, wrote Acts of the Apostles. And he's talking about healings, this, that, something everything yeah luke is a doctor yeah okay and he has witnessed during his time even things like you know fever leaving towards the end of the book of luke when uh, uh, paul is in an island uh, the yeah fever exactly. leaves uh, you know one of the leaders there so i don't think god was doing miracles at that time because they didn't have medicines because there is no such clear mention in scripture about that. They had medicines. But still, you know, uh, we've seen so many uh, scriptures that say that God chose to reveal himself. For example, even that uh, Cana incident of water turning into wine. I'm just thinking with you, Sean. Okay, yeah, I'm not trying to uh, put down your comment in any way. Uh, it was not like there was no wine. If there's no wine, then the uh, logical thing is to go buy wine but jesus did a miracle and scriptures say that he revealed his glory god likes to show off his greatness you know whether medicine exists or it doesn't exist like or we could say suppose you know uh, uh, because medicines are there god won't do miracles okay then maybe god should only be healing um, complicated conditions why are fevers getting healed like at least in my case i got healed of a fever uh, or i could have just got a prophetic word about take a paracetamol or something like that right but my fever got healed meaning for god it's not so much about you know how big the situation is how small but it's to express his love to for me that fever may be a very big deal Right. So the compassion of God. So the point I'm making is it's not so much about, you know, the existence of medicines or non-existence of medicines. Uh, but God does do these miracles despite medicines existing. OK, so I mean, think about it if you feel like you have any points. Uh, yeah. And before and uh, before you see that when Jesus was doing miracles and you see some situations that he asked like do you believe do you have faith and when it comes to us when we are doing that uh, we, we do uh, when we heal someone or when we administer uh, he healing and stuff we do it from our faith but what about that person mm. does does that matter is what I'm asking if that person believes doesn't believe like... mm. so we'll come to one of the chapters okay, sure. which talks about faith yeah. uh, to answer in a short way yeah. uh, our faith is what matters the most. So if I don't carry faith as a minister, then my prayers may not see results. Okay. But having said that, there are times when God moves sovereignly. For example, there is a you know paralyzed man at the pool of Bethsaida. He's not even expecting a miracle. He's waiting for some angel to come and stir the water. But Jesus goes to him. Where is his faith? Maybe he had zero faith. He never expected Jesus to come. But Jesus came, raised him. He was fine. Where is the faith of Lazarus? The man is dead. <laughs> okay? Maybe it goes in minus. <laughs> no faith. <laughs> Did his sisters have faith? No. 
obviously because they said yes jesus we know you will raise on the last day okay so nobody has yeah validating man okay ha huh. but they had faith no yeah maybe his friends are uh, right yeah see so uh, generally god works on the basis of our faith according to your faith let it be done for you so that is how god works but there are exceptions there are times when the person receiving the miracle may have no faith god still does it to show his greatness to show his glory yeah what about this god's timing see hmm. let's say uh, for the answer to your question see uh, you only told that one uncle came and he prayed for me and i got healed mm. i mean we just let's say you are you are suffering from oh, three days two days but you have faith mm. you also you also maybe you might you might did praying and all just mm. god heal me and all but what we can say you didn't got healed on the first day or second day mm. i mean not taking particularly and yeah, yeah. just say anything mm. so uh, some other uncle or some other pastor came to me and prayed then i got hit mm. what about we can can we put this in way it's god's timing mm. the other thing was also see someone have, have a cancer so it should not be like i should not go to medicine and take medicine it's not like god will do miracles and that but yeah there is a, there is definitely a god's timing and uh, like mm. everyone won't be get healed every time we have faith everyone will have faith mm. okay. but maybe this this may be stopping us like mm. Mm. okay fine anand i'll just say uh, two quick things only two minutes left <laughs> so i i think first chapter we have to do next class mm, uh, we are still in the introduction uh, so the two things are see we when we study jesus's life every time people came and asked him he did the miracle he never said there is a right time or come back tomorrow never you don't see that at all and instantaneously people were healed so every time you approach jesus there's a miracle okay now let's keep that in mind now see there are two things is heal being healed a spiritual reality for a believer yes because by the stripes of jesus we are healed right isaiah 53 um uh, uh, verses 4 5 when we see that he carried our sorrows he carried our sickness um you know by his stripes stripes we are healed it says if you look at 1 peter 2 24 peter says by his stripes we were healed already it's done in the spiritual realm okay so it's already done so the question is more about manifestation understood so uh, we are just waiting for it to show up in our in our physical realm that okay i want to see all these symptoms go i want to see everything fine uh, so maybe that's when we are looking at the timing why is it not happening it, maybe at the right time uh, god will god will reveal it but in the ministry of jesus we don't see any timing he never mentioned about it secondly even in the wrong timing god did a miracle because going back to john chapter 2 uh, the mother of jesus goes and says they don't have any wine and then jesus says what is this my time has not come this is a wrong time you're asking me too early but even at that time he did the miracle so for him timing is nothing he's already done it on the cross okay and when we ask him for a miracle it's more about first of all we need to ask secondly we need to have faith and things will happen so at least from my my understanding of scripture there's nothing like the right time for the miracle or the right time for the healing or the right time if somebody is oppressed if somebody is sick god wants them instantly out of that situation like what practical <laughs> yeah tell me yeah so yes 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 yeah good very good point anand so 
that's what we are discussing right now that we need some keys <laughs> to unlock the manifestation of the supernatural it already exists it's already granted in god's word but our faith is being built up okay uh, as we study scriptures our faith will be built up and we see even all over the world if you study about the different movements that have taken place you know after the dark ages like 1400 ad then you will see one by one you had um, different moves right like sanctification healing movement uh, currently uh, the the what uh, move of the saints movement of the saints where god is restoring the fivefold ministry offices and with the fivefold ministry offices also is the you know restoration of this whole understanding of uh, um, you know the prophetic and different works of power of god so god is doing that till he brings all of us to the unity of the faith these things are in the word my point is as we gain more understanding you will see more and more happening we will see more and more happening and uh, yeah you will see i will see it has to because jesus said you shall see you shall do greater works than these only thing we have to um get that understanding of the scripture huh that is another key yeah keys keys correct keys so we'll start with the keys from next class uh let's uh, close with a word of prayer i uh, thank you um all our online students for your comments i know i didn't read them out but thank you so much for answering the questions all right let's uh, uh, pray together uh, would somebody prince jesus uh, lord uh, we thank you for this time oh lord father we thank you for all the things that we have discussed oh lord father everything that you have spoken to us oh lord father we thank you jesus and lord father we ask for your wisdom oh lord father to unlock our understanding oh lord father regarding what you our heart is oh lord father for your people for us oh lord father and jesus we ask oh lord father that you will open our open the eyes of our hearts oh lord father to see you jesus to understand you more oh lord father to walk in the way that you have called us oh lord father even we pray oh lord father that what are we going to learn lord father we pray oh lord father it will uh, be practical in our lives oh lord father god jesus we thank you for everything jesus help us to know and grow lord father in more of you jesus in to do the things that you have called us to do and lord we submit ourselves we submit our understandings we submit our hearts our minds into your hands oh lord father let your will be done in our lives oh lord father as it is in heaven we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you prince and thank you everyone have a good week good uh, weekend yeah today is friday <laughs> okay and we will uh, meet you all next next week next session okay bye